here we go. Tonight, we investigate legal highs. All we can do is keep an eye on things which are a problem or become a problem. We meet the users. If you ban one, there will always be a replacement. It's got to be the maddest thing I've taken. Oh, it's horrible. We go undercover to buy highs. My boss said, yeah, bong it, but really? And we show the disturbing <laughs> effects of some of these legal drugs. I would give a strong warning to everyone, don't take it, eh? How is this legal? <laughs> From BBC Wales Week In Week Out, can I ask you a couple of questions about a product you sold to a 17-year-old girl? We need a lighter, don't I? The generation of young people who are being sold the lie that legal means safe. Craig Mahoney is celebrating his 26th birthday at his flat in Cardiff. Craig and his friends have bought a product called Salvia. You take it and then you just feel like, you just feel different. Your head feels really light and then all of a sudden it just, it just hits you. This is a powerful drug derived from a Mexican plant. It's legal, available to buy on the high street. But it's not for human consumption. I sweat a lot for some reason. We only come out of here like just wet, and uh, you just do it, and then whatever, whatever you see, your trip, it can last for about two, three minutes. It could be anything, but um, that, that happens, and then after you just kind of get brought back into the room, and like your head gets screwed back on, and you're sitting there, and you're just like, what is going on? Sometimes it's like you can get a bad trip, or you can get a good trip. It's, it's a bad ones, although you just you can panic, and I've seen people run out of rooms and stuff. Get me away from this. If I'm screaming, Craig. I swear I'm going to do it again. You have done it again, and I'm going to fucking kill you. Craig! <laughs> Stop moving. <laughs> Happy Rich! There's no way you run! Have you got the sweat again? Do you know what? Stop talking to me. Get away from me, I swear. Get away from me when I take drugs. Someone take Craig out of the room. Please. Legal highs can be herbal or plant products. They can be chemical compounds, a liquid, or even a gas. They're often marketed as alternatives to classified drugs. More are available than ever before, and they're getting stronger. Twenty-year-old Ashley Pook is a student in Cardiff. A keen athlete, she trains for triathlons, but while she keeps herself fit, she also experiments with some drugs. Ashley and her friend, Hannah Meadows, wanted to try a legal high for a night out. In February, they went online to get drugs delivered to their door. Benzofuru is one of the most expensive, so we thought, obviously, it's like that for a reason. And it was the most popular because it was all sold out. It had good reviews, reviews, didn't it? We watched a blog, didn't we? What, what was that on? Oh, that on guy? YouTube. Yeah, and he was just, he looked like he was really enjoying it. We were like, oh, we've got to get Benzo Fury. It's yeah. going to be amazing. Um, so we, I went onto a website and I spent so much money. I spent £130. It was saying it was planned food and not for yeah. human consumption, yeah. But, but it kind of, it's it said in. Enjoy your party plant yeah. food. When it says not to be consumed by humans, it means, you know, they just Consumer. have to say that. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> they bought their drugs online, but you can also get them on the high street in places known as head shops. These are a few of the highs you can buy in our shops. And even if they are legal, some of them should certainly not be sold for human consumption. And if they are, and the person selling them is breaking the law. We've been told some shops are doing just that. So a member of our team is going undercover. She's just 17, too young to buy alcohol. But what could she get hold of on the high street? She went to a number of shops. One of them was the party shop in Swansea. There were fancy dressings in the window, and then in the smaller window, there was like a gas mask with a bong attached to the front of it. I went in there and asked for some salvia. Do you have any salvia? I know, I came in earlier. 
Salvia comes in different strengths. This man is the shop owner. Legally, he is allowed to sell it, but not for human consumption. A customer chips in. What do I do with it? Like, put it in a pipe. Can I put it in? Um, other shops asked my age or made it clear that they couldn't sell salvia for consumption. What do you want, a pipe or bong? Um, which do you reckon's bad? I'd say a bong. You'd say a bong. Because they've only got that strength salvia left. It's quite expensive salvia because it's flavoured as well. Yeah. The owner should not be telling her how to consume salvia. You wouldn't need as much, so you only need one pipe of that stuff. He pointed to a bong and then he brought one down and he said that it was 5 99 And then he indicated where I should put the water. Head it off. Our researcher has been sold a bong, which she made clear she wanted to use to smoke salvia. Other shops wanted ID. Some sold salvia to her, but only as potpourri or plant food. Drug workers are becoming more worried about the sale of legal highs, which many people believe are all harmless. Alan Andrews is a former drug user and now runs a support service in Llanelli. It's becoming a bigger problem than illegal drugs because, one, the message, legal means safe, which it's not, and these drugs, are, some of them are stronger, more potent than the illegal drugs. And uh, it's quite scary because there's a generation of young people who are being sold the lie that legal means safe. The police their hands are tied because they're legal. But they're very, very potent. Last month, the monitoring center which records drug use across Europe said new highs were appearing at an unprecedented pace. 41 new substances last year alone. So let's see what we can find online. Well, already a heap of websites trying to sell me stuff. The amount of legal highs available to buy online suggests a large number of people are using them. So I can get herbal highs, this one says legal ecstasy, whatever that is, legal speed, legal trips. I've also found forums where people discuss legal highs and share notes on their effects. And it says here, won't be around for long before it's banned. This guy snorted eight lines. A few people waiting for a few more trip reports, they say, before they try any of it. I found this one Welsh guy who takes these drugs and reviews the effects they're having on him in these videos he's posted on the internet. Jack Knight. See what I mean? And I'm advisor. You know, advise people what, what, what are the um, best legal highs to do and what ones are not um, good to do, you know? And now, you've got a bigger problem on your, on your hands now, haven't you, right? Because now you've got um, all these new chemicals out now. If you ban one, there will always be a replacement. Well, anyway, people, I fucking love you, my fans. Initiating. Legal highs aren't a new problem, but there are concerns they're getting stronger. A few years ago, mephadrone, known as Meow Meow, became the party drug of choice for many. Its effects were compared with speed and ecstasy, but crucially, it was legal. It hit the headlines after being linked to a number of young deaths. The availability, like, you can buy it off the internet. There's hundreds of websites. 19-year-old Elliot lives in Cardiff. He's familiar with the city's drug scene and Meow Meow. It's so, like, uh, I've never known a drug to be so available. Like, you could, there was people getting it sent in boxes to halls, like, and just... Uh, it was just everywhere. Mephadrone was cheap, legal, and a hit with clubbers. There's some 50-50s on that. Elliot's used some illegal drugs and had thought legal highs were just a joke. Then he tried Mephadrone. For two grams for a tenner, like... It was so potent, like, it, it was shocking, like.
But as more people used mephedrone, stories began to emerge about the consequences of taking it. It wears off so quick that as soon as it wears off, you're just constantly feeding for that next hit. I, I know a few people, I wouldn't call them addicts as such, but they, they do rely on this drug to, to have a good time like but for some users, there was more than just a come down. 18 year old Max Llewellyn from the Rhondda Valley was using mephedrone. In January last year, he killed himself. At his inquest, the coroner said mephedrone had a role in his death, describing the drug as evil. In April last year, it was banned and made a Class B drug. But Elliot knows people still using it. I mean, there was a girl here that said to me and a friend, her exact words were, I never took drugs and then somebody told me this was legal, so I sniffed it. And now you see that girl every week in clubs, every week she's just off her box and it's like, you told me yourself you wouldn't take drugs unless it was legal, like, you only took it because it was legal. Since the drug's been banned, police in Wales have made more than 100 arrests. This man was prosecuted, but undeterred, he continues to take mephedrone. He asked us not to identify him. Stop it, if... Uh... If, if needs be, right? But you know, for now, it is, it's, it's, it's not a hard thing to grasp. It, it doesn't control my life. I still work. You know, as I still go out and have fun. You know, I, I can still, still go to my house and speak to my mother. You know, it's not that you know, you know, it's taken over my life and uh, I've got no money and you know, I can't control anything in my life. It's not, it's, it's not out of control in that sense. I'm not a man of the plan, really. I just go out and do uh, whatever happens. Something to do, really, just something for the weekend. The authorities have also considered banning salvia, but decided against it. John Ramsey sits on a working group, which reports to the UK government's Drugs Advisory Council. The Advisory Council on Misuse of Drugs has considered salvia, and I think probably will consider it again. It's kept under review. And the issue really is whether we ban everything as soon as, soon as we see it. And there are just so many things to consider that, that um, I, I think the general view is salvia at the moment doesn't constitute a sufficient problem to warrant control. Salvia has been dubbed the YouTube drug because of the number of people posting videos showing its effect. This is what happened when 36-year-old Mark Hopkins took salvia for the first time. We wanted to speak to him about his experience. We found Mark and his friend Neville Braithwaite on the Gurness estate in Merthyr Tydville. Uh, yeah, he didn't know what was going on and he was trying to get up to the house, but we didn't want him coming outside, obviously, because he might do it himself. So when we were stopping and he thought we was all going to beat him up, so that's why you see, oh, get off me and all that. I wouldn't do it again. I wouldn't let. I wouldn't recommend anyone else to do it again either. I'd rather go out and buy something else that's not legal. Because at that time, I, I did feel insecure. Say, you know what I mean? Neville is also filmed having taken salvia. That's got to be the maddest thing I've taken. Got to be. I've tried magic mushrooms, I've tried acid, the odd pill powder, and out of everything I smashed my head, it's got to be that salvia, and I don't think I'd want another go. John Ramsey tests thousands of drugs every year. Salvia is quite an unpleasant drug. It, it's a very potent, powerful hallucinogen. It has p deep, powerful effects that come on quickly and are intense and wear off relatively quickly, and not many people enjoy it. So we're not overly concerned about salvia, I think, because very few people take it twice. No way. I don't think I'd ever try it again, and I wouldn't want no one else to try it again either, <laughs> to be honest with you. No way. You don't know what's going on anyway, you, you can't control it. I would give a strong warning to everyone, don't take it, like. It's not nice at all. Salvia wasn't banned. Experts thought it so strong it wouldn't be regularly used. Having been sold a bong, our researcher is going back to the party shop in Swansea to see how they would sell her the drug. This time there was a woman in the shop. I told her that I'd already bought a bong from her colleague and I asked her about the salvia. 
I just know that friends of mine that have been smoking salvia themselves have been saying that there's a that is in in insanity to put them in a bong because you know it's just gonna kill you. Yeah. Well, if I was to get that, I understand if you were like really careful and and and, and you don't bong it, but rather smoke it from the pipe. Yeah. It's rather pleasant. So if I buy that, my boss says, "Yeah, bong it." But really. <laughs> But I don't know. I don't think he has ever tried it himself. Yeah. She should not be selling salvia to our researcher when it was clear she's intending to consume it. All right, then, I'll probably be back... Um... Neville and Mark in Merthyr yeah. had times 10 strength. She's just been sold times 60. Thank you. All right, then. Bye. I told her I'd speak to my friend about getting a pipe too and then come back. A few minutes later, she returns and is sold a pipe. I'm just looking. I spoke to my friends. Pipe. That's pipe. good. You know, this is the cheapest one. Three ninety nine. But it help was the one that you just silver. Yeah. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Yes. Please. Okay. So what do I do with that? Put it. You need gauzes with that as well, probably. Fifty p. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. And don't use it with the alcohol. No, 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 no. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. So our researcher has the salvia, the equipment she needs to consume it, and a few handy hints from the staff. In selling it to her for human consumption, they have broken the law. We contacted the owner of the party shop in Swansea, the man who sold her the bong. He didn't want to be interviewed, but in a statement he said... The rules governing the legality of salvia are vague, ambiguous and confusing. He said he decided to no longer stock this and similar products. Back with Craig Mahoney, the party goes on. Two trippy, really bad trips. Two bad trips, man. Yeah, if you do a website, that's it. Yeah, that's it. This is strong. Craig has a full time job, but when off duty, he occasionally chooses to take salvia. That's it, that's it. Good trip or bad trip. If you have the bad trip, it probably it scares people a lot and they're like, oh, I'm not doing that again, I wouldn't touch that again. Some people I've, I've seen do it, they've, they've had a, such a bad trip, they're just like, no, I'm not doing it again, not to get it away from me. And then other people, they, they, they love it. Salvia can be unpredictable. Craig's brother Liam learns no two trips are the same. Fucking me up. <laughs> I'm just fucking me up. <laughs> You're like, oh, up. No. He's having a fucking... No. He's having a bad oh. He's going to do he's it. He's having exactly what happened to me. He's in there are some concerns it can cause psychotic episodes. <laughs> Do you ever think there could be risks? Do you ever think, should I be taking this? What might be the consequences? Well, no, the way, so if it's legal, it's in the shop, then it's not going to... I don't think it's do anything to harm you, to kill you. Do you see what I mean? You can have, like, one, one minute you have the extreme yeah, intense yeah. feeling, now you've oh, gone to the flip oh, side. Oh, God, that just freaked me out. That freaked me out. That. It's like it was never going to end. It was like it was never going to end. It was like a... Oh, fuck. Shepard here told me. Craig bought his salvia in a shop. To buy their legal highs, Ashley and Hannah didn't even need to leave the house. Because I remember to start, we were like seeing all vivid colours and stuff. And yeah, it was, it was good at start. It was good, but then after about an hour and a half, maybe. It was horrible. Yeah. It was just, it felt like you were crushed on the floor. It wasn't like nice euphoria thing you get with all the other drugs. It was just intensely yeah. depressing. My heart was going really fast. I actually thought I thought I was going to die. Oh, it's horrible. You know, people go down the street and they and buy bags of cocaine out of people's pockets and they don't yeah, worry, yeah. but then there's, like, off a, web, a website on the computer, which is obviously can't be that bad because it's allowed to have its own website. They don't even know what chemicals they actually took. The night ended with them in hospital. It's not just A&E which deals with the consequences of legal highs. Tonight, we're on duty with Tony Laidlow and his team on the door at a club in Abergavenny. 
They're briefed on the legal highs currently circulating on the party scene. This one here, obviously you can see you get the little tube with it. Yeah. This one's actually like cocaine where you sniff it off the toilet seats or wherever you're going to sniff it from. I mean, the thing that we're doing, uh, in regards to whether it's legal or illegal, we, we don't let them in. I mean, we ban them straight away. They're banned for three months. They won't come back. Uh, and that's the way we run it. And you look at them, I mean, you look at caffeine pills, it's identical to an E. And you know, the way we detect it, we can't detect it. It's, it's near on impossible. It really is. For Tony, it can be a dirty job. What we're doing now, obviously, to combat the drug taking, is we're putting Vaseline and WD-40 on the surfaces. And as you can see, like, the brown stains is where cocaine kind of, like, melts on WD-40. So it leaves little brown stains. We're putting them on all the surface up here, across here, and uh, on the heaters, funny enough. Um, as you can see, like, there's residue of where we put stuff across it. WD-40 disintegrates any kind of, like, uh, cocaine or any kind of powder substance. It disintegrates straight into it. And obviously, we're taking locks off doors so that we can actually get easy access into the toilets. So then you can obviously see people taking it. As you can see, more brown stains from where people have been taking it. We've put WD-40 on. And um, once they've taken it, they kind of throw the bags away because if they get searched, obviously we've seen empty bags. And they seem to be hiding inside there, as you can see. It's difficult to, to police, but we're trying our hardest to do it and combat it. Tony suspects a man of being on drugs. A girl says he was trying to spike her drink with the contents of a small brown bottle. Did I say you got drugs in you? I said somebody said you got Why a brown you, bottle in you. It's a fucking brown bottle. So I asked you if you, you got a brown bottle. You want to come away on your own with me then? Oh, really, mate? That's right then. Well, fuck off then. I take my feeling the pound and go. By the way, he was, um, I can see that he was gurning, which is obviously a, an effect where they chew their mouth when they're on something. Um, and also he was, he was talking really, really fast, which is another effect. We don't want to take the risk of that. Um, it could be something worse. And then again, if somebody takes something and it kills them, then it's on our heads, really, to be honest. And so we want to stop it from coming here to try and stop it. But we're not, not going to stop it, but we're trying. We're trying our hardest. So who is policing the sale of legal highs? The Home Office and the Department of Health both have roles, as do agencies like Trading Standards. Jackie James works for them in Cardiff. This is the difficult area. These substances are very unknown. We don't know where they were produced, who made them, how they were made. We don't know those answers. I have a thousand questions about these products and I have no answers. When we look at some of the samples, you'll see the things that people have put on them, the producers, to try and get around legislation. They'll have things on them like not for human consumption. They're trying to think of anything we may use to get them off sale and counteract that in some way by slapping a label on it. Can you think of any other product people might consume that is so unregulated? Generally, no. <laughs> Our researcher is undercover again. This time she's in Llanelli, on the lookout for a liquid high known as poppers. There was a shop called Magpie's Nest. I went in and I asked the woman um, about poppers and she showed me them in a box. One five pounds, three yeah. ten pounds. Oh, one five pound. Excellent. Please. So what do I do? Do I just... Selling poppers containing the chemical isopropyl nitrite to anyone under 18 for them to inhale is against the law. She advised me not to take it on my own and said that I should have somebody with me when I did it because it makes your head feel funny. Our 17-year-old is sold the poppers and told how to use it, which is against the law. Poppers um, traditionally, or they used to contain a compound called isobutyl nitrite, that was removed from sale to the public because it was suspected that the compound might cause cancer. So the, there was a European directive which removed it from sale. That was immediately replaced by a compound called isopropyl nitrite, which is what's currently in poppers. But I believe that might also cause cancer. Uh, it just hasn't been tested. Do you think that people who are taking poppers are aware of that risk? 
No, I'm, I'm sure they're not. I mean, I don't think we adequately attempt to control poppers. We contacted Magpie's Nest in Chenechi, where our 17-year-old researcher was sold the liquid high. The owner didn't answer our allegations, so we went to the shop to talk to him. First, we met the shop assistant who sold the poppers. Hello. Hello. What's, what's the connection with that? Yeah. Oh, we've got some evidence of a 17-year-old of a girl being sold poppers, being shown how to use them, mm. and that is against the law. All oh, right, OK. And I think perhaps you may have been the shop assistant who sold those, those poppers to that girl. No comment. OK. Can you please leave now? OK. Yeah. We'll wait for Mr Hewitt. Yeah. Thank you very much. Then the owner at the time of our secret filming turned up. Mr Hewitt, from BBC Wales Week In Week Out, can I ask you a couple of questions about a product you sold to a 17-year-old girl? Mr Hewitt, we have evidence of you selling poppers to a 17-year-old girl. I've told you, no comment. I put the letter into the Twitter. That's it. Can you leave now, please? Trading standards are interested in the evidence gathered for this programme. Parliament is now considering temporary banning orders on new legal highs. Some want to go further. I think the Misuse of Drugs Act is, is about time it was reviewed. There's been a lot of talk about whether things are appropriately classified. And I think the, um, the development of these new compounds at the rate they're being developed probably warrants a, a second look at how we control all drugs. We wanted to speak to the Home Office about this, but no minister was available. In a statement, though, they said legal highs can be extremely dangerous and anyone taking them is playing Russian roulette with their health. They said they're building a robust system to tackle this worrying trend. There are, of course, risks with taking illegal drugs, but with an unprecedented number of legal highs emerging, the long-term effects are simply unknown. One's made illegal, another one's put in as legal, and it's just going to continue like that. And each one, as they develop, will become stronger than the one before. I know they're legal, but you don't know what's in them. They're basically, we're the guinea pigs, aren't we? People are always going to no try way. them out still. People are always going to think, oh, regardless of what I hear, I might have a good hit, but... Yeah, it's not a good way of thinking, really. Well. You know, one thing's just start to bend. Yeah, <laughs> oh, start to bend. I don't get how this is legal compared to other things which are illegal. It takes something to happen before anyone does anything about something. So, as long as they're available, Craig, like many in Wales, is willing to gamble with legal highs. Is the risk of taking an unknown, untested chemical worth the small amount of pleasure you might get by doing it? And I think if you sit and think about it rationally, you'll probably decide it isn't.